with those activities. Yeah, for, for real. Uh, you mentioned when you're doing your studies on marketing, what did that entail for you? Because like I, I said, when I people I generally talk to, like they're either terrified or like loathsome of just the word marketing, even though it's what's going to be the thing that makes their book sell or not. They don't want to touch it. So what, what did you do? To, what did you do for that? I hate the work of it. Uh, so I was watching Lord of the Rings with my son the other day. He, Which version? The, uh, I'm just nerd adjacent. I warned you. It's the one where, okay, so I was going to tell you the quote and then you'll figure it out. It was the one where they all are going uh, and he says, they're all fighting. I'll, I want the ring. And he says, I'll take it. And he goes, but I don't know the way. And so I think it's, it's where they all band together and they go, you know, they try to throw it in the thing. It's the one after the Hobbit. That was, that was my, just my question for my wife. She's a Lord of the Rings nut. Okay. And, and, the, and the real answer was, well, the extended editions, of course. Yeah. You know, I, oh. I, we sat there, for, we sat there for, I think once a month, she sits down and watches 14 hour. Oh full my of- gosh. See, with yeah. their daughter. <laughs> so I watch them sometimes, but I'm usually doing something else also. Yeah, my, well, she does my, that too. It's usually cleaning the kitchen. Right. I'll watch Clue three times a week for myself, giving it my full attention. But for Lord of the Rings and stuff, I will be watching it with my son. Uh, but anyway, about marketing. So we were watching it yesterday or the other day and Frodo like stands up and he walks forward and everybody's fighting and he's like, I'll take the ring. And then he looks really uncertain. He goes, but I don't know the way. And I was like, oh my gosh, because I had you on my schedule and I've been to your website and I showed my son your website and he's like, oh, this is amazing. I have to buy this book. Like these are my people. And he was like really excited and he's 12. But uh, when I saw that, That's I, awesome. <laughs> yeah, he's, I, I really try to encourage it. He likes to see uh, successful adults that game because he's like, wow, I don't have to give this up when I grow up. And I'm like, no, you don't. Well, and that was a huge realization for me and why I'm creating the book in the first place, because it was a matter of we uh, like you get into self-limiting beliefs. If you start getting into marketing or sales, you obviously come up with those because it's like the biggest hurdle. Everyone is getting their getting out of their own garbage, their own baggage and was coming to the realization for myself. It's like, well, I like being a nerd, but that doesn't mean like I have to own all the negative crap that goes along with being a nerd. Like I can just like nerdy things and still be a successful human. I don't have to pretend that the world loathes me because I like D and D because it's just not the truth anymore. If it ever was. Yes, exactly. And so I really excited. My older four kids were not as nerdy as my, my youngest is, and they really just embrace it. And they're like, you know, fly that flag, buddy, you're having fun. And so it was really it was really like a cool quote for me to find the other day when I knew I was going to be talking to you because that's how I feel about marketing. I was like, I have no idea what to do or how to move forward, but I'm willing and I'm, I'll, I, I need to do it. Like it needs to be done. And so that's, that's my take. Like I don't enjoy it as much as I enjoy creating. And, but if I want anybody to enjoy what I have created, then I need to get out there and tell people about it. And so I don't like the online work of it. I really have enjoyed um, talking to real people. Like if I go to a gun show or I go to like a market day or I talk to people at the park or wherever I meet actual people who like my book, it's very encouraging. And it really energizes me for when I'm like dragging myself through online activities to market the books. Well, and I'd imagine that the type of books that you're selling, number one, there's a lot of offbeat places that don't have a lot of books that you would absolutely fit in at. Like you said, you go to gun shows, the farmer's markets, I'm sure are great. Like I, any homeschool days at anything, like any place would be great. Like there's just lots of places that you can set up shop and hawk that you're going to be the only thing of your, that's there. <laughs> just, there's not a lot of it. Yeah. It's and so when I made the uh the gun safety book, I was I was looking online and I was like, this kind of stuff that's available just looks like unprofessional. Like I just I didn't love any of it. I wasn't excited to buy it and give it to somebody 
I, I felt like it was just what was out there. And so I tried really hard to make something that I would be proud to share or to, um, to sell. Cause I, I mean, it, it is homemade. It is self-published. You know, I, I put it together, but I don't think it has to be like second grade quality. I think it can be a great product. And, and the best part. So when I first started, my husband was like, you shouldn't do crunchy mama stuff. You shouldn't do gun stuff. You know, not everybody's interested in that. You should, you know, have a wider market. And I was like, no, just the small bit I know is that niche markets are great because you can like laser in on those people who have a very specific interest. And there might be very little in that niche for them to like share with their kids, especially in this age group. And so having that laser focus is actually better because everybody in the whole country, you know, buys alphabet books for their little kids. So there's a massive competition for that. You know, you've got the very hungry, you know, Caterpillar, you've got Dr. Seuss, you've got everybody that with massive budgets. But when you get down into a laser focus, like little kids learning to cook in the kitchen or moms that are putting amber necklaces on their babies or parents that are teaching their kids how to reload ammo, like that's a laser focused niche. Yeah. And there's, there's a lot more of those people, even in that niche than you'd actually think. Yes, but it's bigger than the A is for uh, Apple, B is for ball. I mean, it's not bigger. It's it's more focused. You know, it, it might be, it can be a really well, it's, big it's a, it's a starved market is what it is. It's That's like, a, yeah. I don't know. Do you, do you, you follow Connor Boyack and the Tuttle Twins at all? I do because And actually, look how successful he was doing just that. Like, yes. And what it boils down to is because certainly in like the libertarian world, that's where I come from and why you know, Con I know Connor. Um, the one thing we always complain about is there's a lot of people that make like really crappy ideological art. And he was certainly in the children's book space, the first person that like came out of the gates, like, Oh, he, he nailed the making something that's creatively valuable, like not crappy and like suits the need that we want. <laughs> it's that that's, that's a hard part. Like, because everyone, everyone tends to get so wrapped up in the ideological end of things that they forget that like, no, it has to be good or people still won't buy the thing. Exactly. Yeah. I was excited. I saw a ad by him and it used the, the hateful reviews and comments that he was getting about his series. And I was like, oh, I have like four one star reviews. And I immediately went and made them into memes for my book because having a succinctly like denigrating comment or insulting review about your book sometimes when it's so perfectly worded it will exactly tell the other side of the coin that they will love it you know like it will be so perfectly like like one of my one star reviews she said teaching kids about guns is child abuse so when you read that and you know it's not, you will immediately be like, well, maybe I'll love this book if this lady doesn't like it. And so I learned that from the Tuttle Twins uh, ads where they twisted their their bad reviews into good advertising. 